Provenance. Noun. The place where something originally comes from. Welcome back to Provenance. Thanks for watching all this time. I'm super excited to be back here and I was really thinking about what to show you next and I have some works which might be the best works I've ever made in my whole life if I can say that and they might be my most neglected work you know they're works that I haven't looked at in a really long time and they're works that aren't in my inventory system and they're works that have been hiding and getting dusty in the corner so this is a great excuse to pull them out so let's go and have a look quite heavy. Okay, fantastic. It looks like a very serious case here. It probably weighs about 20 pounds, but I think that's the case more than the contents. So let's open this up. Uh, it says lock, unlock. So let me switch that. Oh, okay. So that's interesting. So this is a, I, I really haven't opened this case in a few years. So I forgot about this top pocket. So in here there's some post-it notes and these used to be the titles of the work that are inside. So we have things like Totem, Less Mess, Tokyo to Athens to Tokyo 2008, um, Iowa, Test Tone, Father Earth Intake, Anyway, I'll just flick through those quickly. So the boring you all with reading them out. Rush tree work, not too keen on this one. Distance name. I'm in the mood for love. I will be up early, but we'll try to get this as possible. Oh, it's a me. The one piece or two puzzle man. I have a very weird system when it comes to naming things and that's usually just the most simple, obvious naming system. But anyway, back to what I was doing, I get distracted. Let me open this up. Okay, here we are. It's like bricks of gold, but really bricks of books. So this is the medium that I exclusively worked in for a few years. And so to backtrack a little bit, I'm guessing all of these books are from around 2003 to 2008. So 2003 is when I first moved to Japan and I was gifted one of these books by a friend, an artist, Christiana, and she gave me one of these books when I moved to Japan in 2008. And it was an interesting time because, so I moved to Japan 2008, I just finished art school, I did what you're meant to do as an artist. You know, I went to art school, I got a degree in art, and I thought that was it. And then I realized I would never really have a career doing art because I graduated top of my year and it just seemed like in London that art was something that was for other people, not myself. You know, it wasn't for people where I'm from. It wasn't for people who looked like I did. It wasn't for people who have part-time jobs and you know have to kind of survive in life so when my friend Christiana gave me one of these sketchbooks she said you know like keep drawing and I didn't touch it for a long time because I had all of these thoughts and a lot of those thoughts were like well I'm not good at drawing there's so many people that are better at it than me so why should I and so I'm excited to open these up to see kind of you know my younger self you know 2003, how many years ago is that? How many years ago is that? It's uh, 18. 18 years ago, that's crazy. It might be older than some of you. But um, let's pull one of these drawings out and have a look. So the table's not long enough to pull this book out all the way. I think it's about seven foot long and the table's six foot long. But it's really amazing looking back at these and just seeing the detail and seeing the thought and seeing the effort. So these books for me were almost diaristic. 
They were my thoughts, my ideas, my dreams, my hopes, my struggles, my challenges, and also just things that I saw every day out in the world. And so I'm excited just to kind of put the camera lens on here for you to really have a look. And so, you know, I'm just gonna probably get right in here and, and there's definitely this really interesting use of space and, you know, recurring themes. You know, I, I'm obsessed with the number 27. And so this alcohol that this guy is getting drunk on is 27%. And he has the longest arm in the world for some reason. Also has a little crucifix there, so that's interesting. And here, look, here's a familiar character. It's Hangman, HM. He's in this kind of painting that's hanging off of this creature here. And then there's stick figures. We got a little stick figure with a heart here. And it's really interesting to look back at these works and see these recurring themes. You know, I still very much use the word you and stick figures and the number 27 and this mixture of faces and spaces. And so it's, it's amazing looking back at work from 18 years ago and still seeing these things that I use now. Um, you know, obviously when you look at this, it's a lot more detailed than the work I'm doing now as well. But you know, once again, we have the word you, but then we also have these interesting creatures. You know, this one almost feels like it has a curtain skin and there's the word me and and it's a lot darker than the work I'm doing now. We have a stick figure, almost with a hangman head, shooting the brains out of this stick figure. And then we have a grave that says 41 hearts with these arrows. And so it's, it's kind of cute, but it's also quite dark when I look at this. Um, I'll just show you maybe a couple of more sections. I believe, you know, let me go back to this beginning bit because this this page is actually quite fragile now. You know, it's almost 20 years old, probably this sketchbook. But, you know, this is a really interesting character with these sunflower buttons and the ocean inside of him, these legs sticking out. And I believe I actually use this as a... Um, uh, design on my friend's company called Beyond the Valley at the time and they did some t-shirts and sweatshirts and I'm, I'm gonna look through the archive to see if I have some pictures of, of these sweatshirts but you know I think these were these were books from my desk or my office at the time when I was teaching English in Japan so I went to Japan in 2003 to teach English and a lot of the time I felt completely useless there. So I was just sitting in the office, hiding from people and, and drawing in my sketchbook here. And I guess, you know, when I think about that time as well, perhaps there are these Japanese influences, you know, these flowers and almost maybe more kind of nature sneaking into the work that, that is really apparent, you know. There seems to be a lot of crucifixes in here. I have no idea why that is. I have to maybe think about that and reflect on my, my younger self. This is a really interesting character playing a banjo. And there's like a leg sticking out here, connected some pipes. Um, there's P-R-R-T-Y. Maybe that was meant to spell party, perhaps. Some stick figures. And then I really love this kind of wood effect that you'll see through a lot of this work. And so, you know, there was, I think there's like 20 plus books in there. So I, I, I don't want to spend too much time on, on this one as a whole, but you know, I, I look through and there's so many amazing little details and you know, these plants with this little figure that's hiding behind this metal desk. And I almost wish I drew like this now. You know, there's so many recurring themes and elements that are still a part of my work. So when I look at this, I see that this was the foundation. But when I look at this, this is when I really started to use drawing as a way to explore myself, as a way to answer those questions. You know, when I was creating a book like this, perhaps in 2003 or 2004, 
I was thinking, you know, why should I make art? There's so many people who are out there drawing that are much better than me. Why should I even start? Why should I even begin? Like, what's the point? Like, what's the point in doing something where millions of people can do it better than you? And then that's when I realized that no one can do me. No one has my experience. No one has my troubles or challenges or triumphs. No one has that unique configuration of where I've come from. And so therefore, when I draw, it might not be the best drawing on the planet, but it's my drawing. And if I repeat that and repeat that and repeat that, I get to use drawing, this very simple tool that we all have access to, as a way of exploring the world, as a way of exploring myself, as the way of creating now something to look back at. So let's see if we can get overhead a little bit and maybe just flip through this last bit. So there's something all of these books in this case have in common is that there are lots of drawing and then at the end it finishes with some words and those words maybe make as much sense as the drawing or the drawing makes as much sense as the words but let me slide this in so I'm gonna read these words for you and we'll see if they make any sense red yellow green blue red yellow green you red yellow looked around the room Red, yellow, green, flu, or glue. Red, yellow, dark blue, lost in a room beside you. Blue, green, blue, shake my hand, give me a little clue. Really, I don't know what to do. Is it me or is it you? Red, yellow, green, who? Three times for must equal blue. Yellow, green, red, who? Lost the way, need some glue. Glue, blue, you, Lou. Who gave you that? Red is not for you. Red, 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 you. Look around to find out who is blue. By now I should have a clue. Red, blue, green, yellow. Blue, you, yellow fellow. Red, red, green. Always so mean. Dark, blue, forgot who. Only now I have no clue. Or is it glue? Red fellow, glue, blue. Red fellow, blue, who? Red fellow, glue, dark blue, red, yellow, who? Cool. Anyway, went dizzy reading that. <laughs> I, I really love lines as poetry or poetry as lines. I don't know if that sounds a bit cheesy, but I think drawing can be drawn with words. So, so when I'm reading that, you know, red, yellow, green, blue, red, yellow, red, who? It sounds like the lines if they were drawing. So let's open it up as well. Oh, and this is nice. If you look in there, it says Chantel May, because May is my middle name. So let's open that up. Oh, one last thing here on this book is that it says Chantelu. So Chantelu is how my name was pronounced in Japanese. So for five years, all my friends call me Chantelu and not Chantel. So let's open this back up. See, I feel like there was so much just in this one little book and then when I look down I'm like whoa there's like 20 other books so there's so much material here so um, London Tokyo less is mess ball I Russia this is nice um, this isn't my phone number anymore, 347. Oh, that is my phone number still. So don't show my phone number, but these are our, um, these are our old little business cards. We blur out my phone number because I don't want you all calling me, but these are really nice. I wonder if any of you have these out there. Okay, Iowa, Freeheads. Let's see if uh, I can find one that talks to me. All right, so let's pull this one out. And the reason I, I wanted to pull this one out is because as soon as I opened it, it didn't feel like me. It felt like it was drawn at a time where I was really insecure 
and I was really not confident and I was very hesitant with my lines. And so I wanted to have a look and remind myself of what it feels like to draw, but not completely draw as yourself, to when you draw and you feel like you should be doing something else, if that makes sense. So, so let's have a look here. So the great thing about drawing in an accordion book is that you can draw here, you can draw here, you can draw here, you can draw here, and then you can kind of join it all up together. So if you're like me and you have a very low attention span, this is a really good way of drawing. And, you know, it starts off with a lot of space with this, you know, weird carrier, carrier with this weird character with a big belly button. And it's kind of not filled in then there's some architecture. We have this weird creature kind of about to eat this giraffe. And when I look at these lines, there's something very hesitant about them. There's something about these lines where I didn't have the confidence and I'm thinking too much about what I'm trying to do. So when I look at these lines, it shows that I'm thinking, I'm hesitating, I'm planning, I'm not being confident. You know this type of mouse maybe not something I would typically try and draw but I'm trying to maybe be someone else and then I think as time goes on I can see that I'm now focusing more on observing and focusing on what are things right in front of me you know this was a sweater of mine at the time there's some more architecture some books on the shelf so I'm going back to just what's in front of me instead of imagining things that are not there and I feel like this is slowly giving me the confidence to practice and build up my line. There's a little HM hide in here again. So I feel like that practice of just observing, just drawing what's in front of you, I can see that it's slowly giving me the confidence over time here to then imagine again. So then you can see it starts to kick back into imagination and we have this washing line and there's a foot with a hole in it on the washing line and then we go back this is a very creepy character look at this it's like two heads I can't tell if this head's trying to eat this head but this is really dark then there's some milk so it's interesting I can see that I'm going in and out of these pockets of like being confident not being confident observing what's in front of me like this is the JR the Japanese train line and Taka Dano Baba is an area and then we have this awkward kind of character with a duck here and so for me it's really interesting to look back at these and just see that there was a time where I was trying to find myself where I was trying to find my line where I was trying to find my confidence and it's always good to remind ourselves as artists that we started somewhere you know we look for somewhere for our inspiration for our confidence and you know just through practice you know there's a whole box of books there just through that practice i really got to build up my confidence and this one's very rare because on the back page there isn't words so that looks like it's something that happened after this book but that's um that book's called tower so it was a very interesting one to look back on. So I feel like there's so much in here, there's so many books in here that I'd love to explore, but maybe that's a lot of fine lines that we'll come back to. It's also interesting, a friend described my career or my journey as line weights or line periods. So this is the beginning of my work, the beginning of my career, very, very fine lines. 0.05 pens, very fine. And then the next chapter is medium lines, and then the next chapter is thicker lines, and so the lines are getting thicker and thicker and thicker as I'm growing in my career as an artist. So, you know, one day maybe I'm drawing lines in space, who knows. So I, I should also say that when you draw in these types of books, you see how small that is? You know, it's smaller than my hand. So when I'm drawing in this type of book, it's just me and the book and it's very intimate it's very close you know when I'm drawing in this book I have to be really close to see the lines to see the detail and 
Also, when I was living in Japan, I'm extremely shy. I'm not very confident. I don't want to show my work because I don't think my work is good. And so this was the perfect canvas for me. It was something I didn't have to share. It's very small, so I could carry it around with me by myself. And I feel like as I've grown in confidence, I want to share the work. I want to show the work. Uh, I want the work to see other environments. And I believe that this is me, low confidence, wanting to share, wanting to create, but by myself. And then now, as I'm drawing on these giant walls or these giant canvases, it's because I've gone through this journey of practicing, of getting to know myself, of building that confidence. And there's no way I could have jumped to where I am now. And I think it's very important for us as artists to know that we're in no rush. There is no rush. You cannot rush because you have to practice. You have to build that confidence. You have to spend that time to get to know yourself and to know who you're not and who you are. And then you can get to start to share your work with more and more and more people.